Hi friends, I'd like to talk to you about pregnancy and postnatal exercise when it comes to that. I know it can be a confusing time and it can be really quite daunting. And after all of the years that I've been training pregnant women and rehabilitating their core, such as Tiffany Hall, I took her through two pregnancies and rehabilitated her core back to being into full training that she loves to do, I'd like to take you through those do's and don'ts of what we do. So we're looking for, when you do fall pregnant, we are looking for that you are seeing a health professional. So looking either a women's health physio in the area or a qualified personal trainer, make sure that you've got your care circle around you because there's so many things that come up through pregnancy. I don't need to go through everything that could possibly come up because it may not happen to you. You may get pelvic girdle pain, you may not get pelvic girdle pain. What happens when you do get pelvic girdle pain at 24 weeks, it's not the standard program so you need to be able to check in with someone of going, how do I modify when that actually comes up, when I've got that pain through one side of the pelvis? You need to just check in with someone that you can go through. So you can feel a bit more confident about what you're doing. Training wise, we're looking for strength training when it comes to pregnancy. There's certain areas that we want to keep strong through our upper back, our core, our pelvic floor and our glutes. They're the main areas that you want to keep going through. And my other piece of advice is not to mix up the training too much. Get into your six week program, working through it three to four times a week and then you can modify it. You've got that simplicity of being able to modify. So if you've always been doing a single leg squat and you do present with pelvic girdle pain, where it's simple modifications, we bring it into normal squat for two legs. So things like that you can easily modify through rather than chopping and changing and having all sorts of different workouts. Now the other one that which is a little bit controversial is stop wearing your heart tracking. We wanna actually feel how you're feeling on that day every single day that you train is different. And every single day you might have a little bit lower back pain, you may not have it the next day. So you train on the day that you're actually exercising and doing your workout. So a heart rate monitor will give you a number and it gives you stats, it's not the time for that. What we actually wanna do is, we don't go on what your heart rate number is anymore because we're all different. If there's so many factors in. If I have a coffee, my heart rate's gonna spike. So that's gonna change out my workout on the day. So I'd rather, actually going on how you feel. So when you can't have a sentence and your cardio is getting a little bit and you're ha, puffing too much, cardio is too high. We want to be able to say a little sentence without being a full conversation. All right, without further ado, I want to take you through whatever stage of pregnancy, just fallen pregnant, midway through your pregnancy or even postnatal, but it also is not only just pregnancy. I've not had children and I work pelvic floor every day. I learnt very early in my life that my pelvic floor is part of my foundation of my entire trunk and if that pelvic floor is not activating and working like I need it to, that gives me a few difficulties in what training I was trying to do, so I really needed to do that. And I still, to this day, will always train pelvic floor and I always have all of my clients, no matter who they are, starting on pelvic floor. From my 13-year-old client up until my 76-year-old client, we always do pelvic floor. All right, making your way down onto the floor, come into four point kneeling. Okay, into the setup here, we're gonna have our hands right underneath our shoulders. Drive your shoulders down away from your ears. We wanna find our neutral spine. The best way to find that is round up into a bit of a cat stretch, lowering it down all the way, and then finding your neutral ground in the middle of it. You wanna do a small tuck through of driving your pelvis in towards your nose. Fabulous. Now from here, this is a tricky part, you wanna try and relax your abdominals. So I know a lot of us actually hold on to them. So let your belly fall in towards the earth. Really let it go. I know that you're trying it, but give it that extra 10% now because I know that you would have held it up a little bit. So take a nice deep breath, let those abdominals, let the belly really relax out towards the floor. Okay, I think you're there. All right, from here, draw up through your pelvic floor. So we wanna squeeze and lift the pelvic floor, which is an internal muscle. Driving it up towards your heart and holding it. So it's sitting quite low. You'll feel the, a little bit of an activation of those lower abdominals starting to come through. And we're going to work up levels up the abdominals. Okay, so we've got level one, you're lifting and holding. Move it up, level two, so about where your belly button is. Still being able to breathe normally. Level three, lifting up a little bit higher. And now we're going into full lift of all the abdominals, holding it up and hold it here for four. Three, two, one, and let it relax. 
This video, I'd like you to come back and do it many, many times, especially daily. If you can make it a daily routine, you'd make me very happy. We're going to go through it one more time now. So we're going to completely relax down through the core. Shoulders relaxed. Really let your tummy go. Come on, let it go. Okay, pelvic floor just by itself. And you might find that was the hardest part of it because we're not used to elevating up through the pelvic floor or contracting the core from the foundation, which is the pelvic floor. Lifting it up to level one, level two, level three, level four, holding all of the abdominals on. You've got pelvic floor in stage four, folding for four, three, two, one, and let it relax. So whatever stage of pregnancy you're at, or postnatal, or never had children, you can start working on my top four exercises there with going through the levels, because you can really feel the levels coming up. Now the pelvic floor sits at the bottom of the torso, I won't go through the anatomy of where it's at, you can have a look at that later. It is a muscle fibre of type 2 and type 1, so we're looking for strength and endurance. So when we're training the pelvic floor, Think about it as if you're training every other muscle in the body. We want our strength. So your strength is going to be squeeze and lift the pelvic floor up towards your heart and hold for one, two, are you doing it with me now? Three, four, good strong hold, five, six, seven, eight, keep holding it nice and strong, nine, ten, and let it relax. Ultimately, you'd like to be doing those three times a day. So come back and do this part of the video another two times today. Second one is our endurance. So we go for 10 times strength. The next one's endurance. So endurance is you might be going out for a run or you've gone for a walk and you've walked four kilometres and you take it to that extra kilometre and all of a sudden you're really busting for the toilet. It's the endurance of the muscle. So the muscle has been trained up for four kilometres and you've taken that little bit extra. So we want to actually work through endurance. So endurance on our first round, which is strength, we're driving the muscle up as strong as you can. So think of the strongest exercise that you've done before and you want that intensity behind it. When it comes to endurance, not so much as strength. We're wanting about a 40% muscle contraction. So we're going to gently draw the pelvic floor up towards your nose, holding it here. You put the clock on and we hold for a minute. Good, so we're holding our pelvic floor. An interesting fact, I still want you to be holding your pelvic floor now. An interesting fact is about that 30 second mark, your brain is going to say, you aren't doing it anymore. Give it the benefit of the doubt, keep pulling it up, keep holding that pelvic floor on. And at the end of the 60 seconds, which is almost here, five, four, three, two, one, let it relax. And that is when you recognize, did you have something to lower down into the floor? Beautiful. Now our last one is our reaction. So we go to jump or we jump off a tram or we go for a leap. What should happen, and it doesn't always. This is what got me started into pelvic floor. You jump, pelvic floor should contract. Doesn't always. So we want to work that speed of the muscle. So same thing, pelvic floor, contract, draw it up towards your heart. Hold a clock, 30 seconds. Drive up, so we want to control and release. Contract and release. So we're going for pulses. So same thing, you've worked these other muscles and other exercises in the gym, you're now going to do it for your pelvic floor. So contract, controllably release. Contract, controllably release. Getting through the 30 seconds and rest. And if you like this video, make sure you hit subscribe. And if you like to see more videos from me, make sure you head over to mytxo.com.